Okay, I'm going to figure out the face. You, you guys saw my face. Now you can hear my voice and see the desk for now. Well, welcome everybody to the kickoff live um, Sunday YouTube live with me, uh, Clarice. It's the first one for the year. I hope you guys are excited. Uh, just wanted to quickly wish everyone a happy 2023. Uh, I've been wishing you guys all over the place. So if you've not seen my Instagram and stuff, here it is again, wishing you. Um, the What I wanted to say is in the comments below, I would love to hear what your, or even in the comments right now, what your goals are for this year and what you guys are looking to do and what not. Um, please let me know. I would love to sort of get a feeler for what people are, where people are at this year. We've been doing lives or I've been doing lives with you guys since 2020 March. So uh, we've come to a stage where I'm just checking in to see what people are up to and what you're enjoying, what you're not enjoying. So let me know, guys. And then another thing I wanted to mention is that I will be, I know I've been putting out tons and tons of videos and I'm not even sure if people are getting to watch all of them, but I know you guys um, are every now and then I kind of hear from you guys, but I will be scaling back on Sunday lives. So now Sunday lives are going to be the second Sunday of every month. So it will be once a month. However, if you are looking for more on creative fabric of fans and patrons, you guys get an additional Sunday live and then a couple of other perks as well. I've updated all of that info for the new year. So check it out when you get a chance. I've listed the info in the description below. So um, check it out. But our Sundays are going to be sacred just for loose florals because that is our first love. Well, it is mine. And if you are following me and if you're doing your lives with me, it's probably yours as well. So uh, let's, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, feel free to mention in the chat, ask questions if you've got any questions or anything like that, and we'll move forward from there. But <clears throat> for those who've been keeping abreast of all my posts on Instagram, I am now officially a ambassador for Princeton Brushes, and I'm super excited for that. I absolutely loved the uh, Velvet Touch, and then you guys know I've been using the Neptune for a while as well. So these are the brushes we're going to be using today. We're going to be using the Princeton. I'm keeping all of these handy. I might end up using two of them. I might end up using all of them. Not quite sure. Let's just see where this goes. So I've got Princeton Neptune number eight. I've got Princeton Neptune number six in the regular round. And then I've got my round uh, number four from the Velvet Touch series. And then also the oval overwash from the Neptune series because I find like the tips like this really help us get some amazing details with loose florals and case in point you will see this is one that I did just as a practice session and this was done from the flower color theory book uh, I just opened a page uh, and I looked at it and I said, I really like these flowers. I'm going to go for it. I don't know if I can find it. And I don't want to take too much time looking for it. But anyways, it's, oh, here it is. Here it is. I ended up doing just like a portion of it. And then again, if you notice, if you guys ever take an image and start painting, it'll never look exactly the same, but the inspiration is there. So you can see the colors. You can see all of that. And it's basic shapes. It's not realistic that's the style that we're going for or that's the style that I paint in and you guys paint along with me it's the loose watercolor style okay all right so uh, I painted this entirely using majority of it entirely using the oval brush and then the little thin lines that you see around here that was the velvet touch number four right here so I'm loving the organic shapes and then with this one here I reverted and I used the I used the Neptune number six, and I think uh, for the thin lines again used the number four Princeton Velvet Touch. 
So you can see um, you're able to get some really nice organic shapes and blends happening because these brushes hold a lot of water and at the same time give you giving you some nice flow on your paper and whatnot. Okay, so putting these aside, I'm going to show you yet again what I was practicing or not practicing, but like just testing out yesterday. And that was this. So I posted this, I think, online um, to let you guys know that we are doing uh, a live today. Really liked how this, this one turned out. Really liked how this one turned out as well. I'm not, um, I believe we are definitely going to be channeling something like this today. So purples, pinks, uh, indigos is what I'm going to be using. Feel free to use the colors that you like. I encourage you guys to sort of go with your own creativity and use uh, swap out colors for whatever your preference is. But definitely digging that as well. Um, okay, so I'm putting this aside. And for paper today, I will be using my uh, Zen Art Supplies 8x8 sheet of 100% cotton. I'm going to put that here, and I've got my brushes handy. I am going to be using my um, my ruler, or my scale, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to use the tip of it to, to try something different with our painting. So if you've got something with a hard edge that you can use to sort of scrape, keep that handy. And let's see what else. I've got water on the side, so we're ready to go. And for colors, I'm going to be using my Mailing uh, Solid Watercolor Pigments, the 48 set. I think a lot of you ended up buying this. I think it's a fabulous, fabulous set of colors. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll let you guys know exactly what colors I'm using as I go along. All right, so... I think I'll keep this handy on the side here just so you can see what we're mimicking or not really mimicking, but, you know, getting inspiration from for anyone joining in a little bit later. I'm going to move my stuff off to the side here. Make sure my colors are open and ready. Okay, perfect. I also have my palette handy on the side. It's kind of messy, but, you know. It works for now and before I actually begin I'm just going to take a quick look over at the comments if anyone has anything to say thank you Patty thanks Kathy uh, thanks Jean, uh, Jean Jean Kathy's goals are to catch up on all the videos and make time to paint daily. Yeah, I think a lot of people are struggling with that. Just, you know, life. Thanks, Andy. Yes, Andy, more likes. If you, if you guys enjoy these videos, please hit that like button. Helps me, guys. Thank you. All right, okay, so let's begin. So I'm going to start off with um, just giving you a basic detailing of how we're, we're going to be walking through this. And most of the videos that I'm going to be putting out over Patreon and Creative Fabrica fans are going to involve detail on this level. Uh, just explaining composition, explaining colors, explaining how I sort of work through things. Okay. So the first thing, if you've watched any of my past videos, I've repeated this till kingdom come really, but never hurts to repeat over and over again. I always like to start off with my main floral so I know where the main placement is. And for that, I will always sort of use a, a larger brush, obviously. In this case, I'm going to use a combination of my oval wash. Whoops. And let's use the number six because I feel I have more control when I use the number six as opposed to the number eight. It's just a nicer size, in my opinion. I think it's like the perfect size. So these two, and what I will be doing is kind of um, fluctuating between the two. I'm going to use the the smaller brush, which is the number six, to get more detailed color into my shape. I'm going to call it a shape because this is a very loose style of painting. 
So as you can see here, all I've done is taken, taken the brush and just sort of loosely added strokes on that, that give me a shape. And then I use that shape to kind of develop the elements within it and then create a flower. So let's just begin. I'm going to start off with using, um, what, Let's see. I'm going to start off with using the, what color should I use? I'm so gravitating towards the rose red because it's so pretty. Um, but I don't want to mimic this exactly on point. So I will use, uh, let's start off with using the cadmium orange for me. And yeah. Yeah, I think I'll use a combination of the cadmium orange and then a little bit of the yellow sienna. I think that would be a good mix or even, yeah, cadmium orange and yellow sienna. So I'm going to start off with the yellow sienna with my big brush right here. So here we go. I want to make sure I'm not taking the yellow ochre. So activating some of that on the side and I'm just going to mix it onto the corner of my palette. And then I'm going to immediately, I'm going to keep this handy just so that, because time is off the essence here, once I lay down my first stroke, if I want a nice beautiful blend, I need to make sure that my color is ready on the second brush so we can go in immediately. So getting some of my cadmium orange on my number six, uh, and my cadmium orange is right here. And again, if I mix that onto my palette and I'm just adding it onto the side of the yellow, um, is it yellow sienna? Yeah, yellow sienna, I think that's okay. The majority of my yellow sienna is on my brush to begin with, okay? So now holding my brush at an angle to get the max, get a loose sort of grip on it. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of strokes. So my first placement is going to be around here. I want it to be like top left hand corner. And then I'll sort of develop a couple of additional similar flowers. As you can see over here, I've got one, I've got one here and then it kind of trails off. And then I've added a little more of that color down at the bottom to sort of make things whole, tie it all in together. So here we go. Starting off, I'm going to just lightly graze the sheet, create my first petal right there. And then using the side of this brush, I'm just bringing, pulling this down to kind of add the center area, the jaggedy, jaggedy negative space to the center area. I'm going to continue doing this creating more sort of petals. And then at this point, I'm going to get some of the orange. And I'm going to lightly add this in to my petals. Now at this point, I'm just going to, I want to have a little bit of this orange happening in some of these petals. So I'm using the number six and I'm adding another petal. And notice how the shapes are on the edges of the petals. Notice how I'm getting like a little bit of a dry effect over here. It's not fully painted in. Notice the blending that's happening as well. And then you want to just intensify the color in the center. So I'm just adding that as well before I do my next petal, which is going to be right here. So you can see how these brushes can really give you different shapes. Like feel free to like turn it around, turn it sideways and get like thinner strokes. Like there's always a way that you can sort of maneuver to get what you want. Unless you're looking for super thin, then obviously you might need to go with a velvet touch number four or something. And I'm trying to leave white space in between just to sort of get 
that loose look leave something to the viewer's imagination sort of almost and we've got our flower right so now at this point if you want to like intensify add some interest visual interest i'm just going to take i don't know let's take magenta i'm taking the magenta one two three four and i'm just going to use it on this brush i'm just going to add it's a little bit dark should have maybe made it watered it down a little bit but that's okay for the sake of this video i'm just adding a little bit of this in different areas here just to kind of have something visually interesting happening and now at this point i'm going to use this brush actually i don't even have to use this one i'll use this one let's create i'm going to touch this petal and create another flower and immediately i get that beautiful bloom love it because now i'm just going to continue using this to create another floral on the side it is lighter but now i'm going to be going in with the magenta and adding more detail with that in here so now here we go magenta and I'm going to start off with doing it mainly in the center. So using this, I'm lightly adding these strokes in the center of this. And because the petals are damp, it's going to blend. And you can see how it's kind of pulling from the color that we have over here. And I got my paper towel on the side, so I'm going to go back with this brush and sort of help this color blend in a bit more. Sometimes you'll find that you need to really help your color blend in. Now here's where we'll use that use the uh, technique that I was talking about in terms of getting some strokes in our in our brush. Oh, sorry, in our getting some texture in our flower. So I'm going to use the tip of this, and I'm going to. From the inside I'm pulling outward and I'm creating lines within within my petals and I don't know if you can see it or not it's a it's more of a subtle look over here because we don't have a lot of double color happening uh, I'm gonna try some of that over here let's see And you don't have to do it in all the petals. You can see the grooves are creating like these darker lines. Switch this around here just to get some of that happening on these flowers. And then finally, that petal. I need to lower the intensity of the light here because I think maybe it's a bit much. You can see better. There we go. Okay. So that's pretty much the idea. I know I didn't do this one since I've done all of them. Let's just create it over here as well. And I love this effect and I want to try and use this effect on more, more artwork that I do. Okay. So we've done two flowers. Let's do one more, and then we can sort of branch off into doing our basic um, filler florals and leaves and such. So I'm getting some more on more of the um, yellow sienna on this brush, and I'm going to do one more here because I want to get that orange happening also a little bit over here on a lighter scale. So this time I'll have this flower facing <clears throat> this way a little bit. So pressing down. And 
and then I'm just going to have a little bit of a top happening here. <clears throat> Getting some of that color within the petals first. And then just going off in the background and just sort of adding like a loose shape almost, kind of indicating that there's petals in the background. And then just dip the tip of your brush in water and you can sort of frame this flower some more if you want to, kind of give it more loose detail. And then I'm going to get some orange. Uh, what color do I have here? I got a little bit of that magenta still on my brush. That's okay. I'm just going to add a couple of strokes of this orange into the petals that I've got so far here. And then just on the background area here as well. The background petals, I mean. Just get that beautiful blend going on. And then switching back, this is where the two brushes are really helpful because then you can go back with the lighter brush and just sort of help the color move along or just sort of blend that second color in with the orange or what have you, just to sort of give it a smoother finish. <clears throat> okay, got to change my battery, guys, so I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. <clears throat> oh, no, I don't. That's so weird. I thought, yeah, no, I do have to change battery. I'll be right back. All right, here we are, back again. Uh, you guys can see, right? Just making sure. Okay, perfect. Let me zoom out just a little bit, okay? Okay, there we go. Um, hey, Jill. 
Hey Cindy, hey Marcia, using this time to just say hi and read the comments real quick. Okay, so we've got our third flower over here and now at this point, let's use the leftover colors or if you wanna use uh, a slightly different color, what I would do is, actually I will use a slightly different color. I'm gonna use a mixture of the magenta that I used in here and I'm going to take a little bit of a purple, so something like a violet red maybe or even a fresh purple and just sort of get some hints of filler florals around over here so let's do that uh, I'm gonna use the let's use the number eight I'm gonna use the number eight and get some of my magenta mixing it on there and I've got some of that fresh purple also over here. So I'm going to start off with getting a very diluted version of this magenta and using the number eight we're going to create basic shapes kind of like this just peeking around our flowers, our main flowers. So we've got the three, let's do some over on this end because this is a nice orange. I think it'll be a great um, contrast. So here we go. So using the side of my brush, I'm just like lightly creating these petals. So there's one, and then right away I'm going to create a couple more. Um, so I'm dip, I've dipped the tip of my brush in water because I want, as I'm kind of making flowers towards the edge, I want it to be like from dark to light, exactly like how we do for a flower, how we always have the center the darkest or try to have the center the darkest and then towards the edges it's lighter. I want the same concept here. So these are almost like little flower stains that we have. So the eye is automatically drawn into the area where we've got the darkest colors and then it sort of slowly fades. Same thing over here, I'm going to create a couple on this side here. So notice how I'm like really pressing down on my brush, kind of getting these like very loosey shapes. If you want to give more detail to the center of these flowers, if you do, just take your um, velvet touch number four and get a darker shade so I'm um, using fresh purple so why not use a little bit of fresh purple and then just sort of add it to the center if you want and then it's giving you a nice little blend now this one is more of a flower that's kind of this is the back of the flower so don't really have to add too much there. So that's the idea if you want to, okay? And now what I'm going to do is get some of that fresh purple onto my brush. I also want to have some of that reflecting in and around our little flowers that we have. So it's sort of like it's a nice, beautiful blend of colors. And then as you sort of, if you feel like there's too much purple, add a little bit more of the magenta and sort of fluctuate between the two just to sort of get that blend. You see how basic the shapes are. There's really not much to it. You're just using your brush and creating, allowing the color to speak for itself. <clears throat> Dipping the tip of my brush in water, and I am going to add looser looking, fluffing, I would say, in and around these areas. over here too why not get a little bit more of that purple just to kind of add some purpley dots
And then if you want to sort of add just a couple of dabs of this color in and around these areas, sure. Okay, so that's it. Let's move on to doing our, <clears throat> our greenery. So I really love how there's a lot of that indigo happening over here. So I'm going to use indigo mixed in with some yellow green. But first I'm going to start off with just using some indigo. So I've got indigo and I'm using my number four brush and we're going to start off with doing these guys here. So I'm just connecting them using the tip of my brush very loosely. You've got these nice little thin lines happening. Kind of weaving them in and around the, um, the main flowers that we have. And notice how I'm holding my brush and holding it like this. So I can just use the tip of my brush and I'm lightly grazing to kind of get those nice thin lines. So first I want to connect them and then I'm going to go ahead, go back inside um, and decide where I want to add leaves and such. Okay. This one's got that bottom there. Perfect. So you can see how these cute little lines really make things pop. So let's go in and get some leaves now. So I'm going to use, again, the tip of my brush to sort of lightly extend. First of all, you can add a couple of shapes in between here just to sort of show um, that there's leaves happening in between the flowers and there's detail for this color happening there and you're kind of tightening up the space in between the flowers to really make it look nice and full. So I'm going to start off with doing like this is what the flowers uh, the the leaves are going to look like. Small leaves because we want to go in with a proper green to get some bigger more um, bigger leaves, like your main primary leaves. These are more like secondary feelers that we're planting around here. I love creating little like viney details, so I'm going to extend this area here. And do something like that. Again, uh, tightening up the in-betweens here just by adding a couple of strokes of this color. Less is more. We don't have to <clears throat> we don't have to fill it up fully. I'm giving you advice about less is more. Meanwhile, I can't take my own advice when it comes to this, so. Have some grace towards yourself if you struggle like I do. All right, so here we go. I'm going to do some over here too. Just cute looking leaves just to sort of add a nice pop to our pinks and purples. Uh, we'll do one. Love those trailing bits that happen. Adding some there too. And then if you just want to add some like more like dotted, dotted uh, fluffing, I would say, 
just go around some of the leaves and just add or even some of the the branches the stem just add a little bit of like dots just add some great texture and also um, some great visual interest I've done some there, done some at the bottom. Let's do some over here. You can see how it's like all tying in together because the colors are popping up all over the place. And again, not a lot of detail, guys. We're just allowing the color to do all the talking. Just ended with that little dot over there, and that's that. Okay, perfect. Loving how this is sort of like going diagonally across the page. Um, that's what I want to see. And zoom out a little bit so you can see the bottom half as well and now we'll move on to doing our regular green flowers so I'm going to use I'm going to mix some of the um, what was it called yellow green with my indigo and this is what I get I gotta add more indigo to this Now, it, it really depends on how much you're mixing. So we've got a really nice dark indigo happening here for our for some of the leaves. So I don't want the green to be super dark. So at this point, this is too much indigo in here. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of the yellow green. And uh, I also don't want the leaves to be super bright because our florals are really bright. So I will add just a tad bit of sienna or burnt sienna. But if you're using burnt sienna, it has to be marginal because burnt sienna is darker. So just getting a little bit of sienna and I want to get that in there. Perfect. Now, um, I know I'm using the number four velvet touch. I don't want the nice fine tip. I don't want tiny leaves. So I'm going to swap my brush out for the number six Neptune, which will give me thicker looking leaves with lesser strokes, right? And more rounded, I guess, edges. Um, I could also use my number eight. That would also work. And I'm just gonna use this one for now. And let's do um, let's 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 get some green happening here. Okay, so first place I want to add some green is here. And I'm just allowing the brush to sort of give me whatever leafy looking shapes I can get. I gotta mix more color, so here we go. So I've mixed some of that color. I got I got a slightly darker shade, so I'm just gonna add some of that hue just to the bottom areas where it's touching the flowers so that we get a nice gradient dark to light effect happening and you can already see that in our leaves just gorgeous beautiful and then using the same color let's just get a little bit of that sienna like I mentioned previously let's get some sienna in there and let's add Oh, 
shapes like that. Like, very simplistic, very controlled in terms of placement because we don't want it to be overpowering and just all over the place. And you can see the shapes like they're very like very organic they're not so much like that doesn't look like a leaf but you know it's a leaf because it's green right that's the whole idea of a that's the whole concept i guess you could say behind the loose style of painting like it's just open to the open to interpretation the viewer And now I really like adding the fluffing. So we're doing fluffing for the green as well, just so it ties in a little bit. And I would say go a little bit, go a lot lighter. So I'm going to wash off my brush and then with a lot of water on it, I'm just going to get some of the green that we have. And you can either do a splatter if you want. I'm going to try a little bit of a splatter here. I don't like how it's going all over the place so I'm going to be controlled and add it manually so I'm just going to add little dots around the leafy areas but then also around some of the in between the flowers and such as well and what this will do is again it'll tie the whole thing together because we've got all these colors involved and that's what we want And if you want to add more of, of a splatter or like a lighter fluffing more on the outskirts, try it. I don't quite know how that would look. I think it all depends on how much you add and exactly how the green, how potent the green is. But try it because I always say go rogue, try new things. You never know until you actually try something. And what's the worst that can happen? It's paper. You can always do it again. So at this point, we're almost, almost done. If you want to take paper towel and just lightly dab in some areas, if you um, if you're looking for lighter, I'm just dabbing some of the green that I've added just to sort of get a lighter sort of stamp feel. Adding it, adding this green in between the flowers as well, wherever I feel I can add it, obviously. Okay, so this is good, and let us add, because we got to add some centers to our main flowers, and this is where I really like adding another shape, and I guess which, which kind of adds more texture to the overall, is going in and adding little circles. So I'm using my number four velvet touch, and I'm going to add little circles and add some sporadic lines around here and there. Um, so the color I would use is a dark purple. I would suggest um, I would suggest using either the deep violet or mixing some of the Payne's gray with the deep violet that might work as well. Just to get a nice dark color, but it's dark. So it looks like it's black, but it's actually one of the colors 
that you used on here just on a darker scale so then again we're tying the whole um, color story in color story color palette whatever you want to call it really so got, I got some of that nice dark color this is what it looks like nice dark purple eggplant I guess you could call it and I'm just using holding using this finger to sort of lift my hand off my sheet and just with the tip of my brush just lightly creating loose little circles sporadically all around mainly at the top area here not so much at the bottom and they're different sizes not different shapes because we're going for circles guys some can be I guess filled in if you want to fill it in some can be little dots if you want to so kind of like that you see that varying levels so they're not all just in a perfect circle some in between And then just a couple, oh, I got some of the green on my hand. And then we're doing our lines. Sort of pulling this downward, extending this. Perfect. So I'm going to leave that as is. Actually, you know what? Maybe add just a little bit more to make it look more full. And then I'm going to add it on this one as well. And this one I'll just add it looking a little less detailed than that one. So I'm just kind of really going and making these shapes and most of them are looking to be filled in or looking like they are filled in done actually I like the filled in look it looks so much nicer so I'm just adding a couple of filled in ones just here okay um, and then these ones are left so you can absolutely do some happening on these what I'll do is I'll add a little bit of yellow to this so I'm going to use some yellow ochre getting it on my brush and I'm going to add little lines just across I know some of them have purple and that is okay we're just adding something additional to our to our composition I'm going to read your comments just as soon as I'm done this. I'll take a little bit of a break. So if anyone has any questions, let me know, guys. Now's the time. Just put it in the comments, and I am happy to answer. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think that's good. Um this flower here is extremely loose in comparison to a lot of them so it could use with a little bit of extra definition if 
one wanted to, but I'm just going to leave this as is for now. Um, and one more thing that I want to do is just add a little bit more of a darker detail to our leaves, just so it doesn't stand out as bright. So I'm getting some of the indigo and I'm going to mix some of it with the, with hookers green. And I'm also mixing a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm, and I have here like a very wooded, woodsy sort of green. You can always adjust how the green looks by adding a little bit more of that hooker's green if you want to. And I'm just going to add with little strokes and details within the, the leaves. You don't have to do them for all, just some, and maybe you could even end up using this green to add a little bit more, a couple more leaves if you wanted to. You can see how things are popping already. All right, that's it. I'm not going to do any more. And this is what it looks like. Okay, I'm going to read the comments real quick. Let's see what people have to say. I didn't add these little thin looking leaves, but feel free to add them in if you if you want. Um, okay. Uh, love this C-shaped floral. Thank you. Um, I think it's this one. Not quite sure. Marcia. Love this beauty turning out awesome from India. Thanks, Yash. Thank you, Renee. Beautiful work. Marcy, I love these colors. Uh, yeah, these are like my go-to gravitating colors, pretty much. Uh, one of my favorite techniques I have learned from Claire is fluffing techniques. Thank you, Kathy. Fluffing has been a game changer for me, I have to admit. The little tiny details added to an already loose painting just really is a game changer for sure. Uh, such pretty flower colors make you look forward to spring. I know it does. I always paint super bright and I always think of spring or summer. Photorealism is so simple for me. Why Claris do I still struggle with loose? Sometimes painting loose with you is so zen, but other times yikes. Patty, I'm assuming from your comment here that today was a yikes, but I'm sure when you show me what you did, which you're going to over Instagram DM, you're going to be like, oh, this is amazing. No, I will say, oh, this is amazing. And you're just being extra harsh on yourself. <clears throat> so that's, that's one of the things that I had put out. Like when you guys paint, when you sit down to paint, you always need to make sure that you're not comparing to what I am doing because everyone has a different style. You have a semblance of an idea of what you want to do. But if you get taken away and you want to go rogue and you want to try new things, then absolutely go ahead. Obviously, it has to be an enjoyable process for you and you have to have fun. So at the end of the day, if you're keeping these things in mind and you're still not happy with what you did, that's okay. Just try it again. Andy, when you decide, 
when you decide that this is the end of this work? When? So I'm assuming you're asking me, when do I decide? Um, that's a tough question, really, because like I said, I could go back in and add more detail to this. I could go back in and maybe add some of these leaves to it as well. So it really depends on, I guess, the artist. Do you want this much white space? Do you want to cover up the whole sheet? Um, if I, I know now, if I add more detail to this, that's going to start this train of me wanting to add more details to the filler flowers. Then I'm losing out on my hierarchy of things which I've sort of created here, which um, like these two being the main ones, the attention grabbers, and then you see this, then you see the rest. So it really depends on what you want as the artist. Uh, Marcia, hi. It was the C-shaped floral you showed in the beginning, pronounced Marsha. Oh, okay. Hi, Marsha. C-shaped flower you showed in the beginning. Hmm. Okay. I'm, it was probably from one of the other ones. Um, what was what was that floral color book you showed at the beginning again, Tanya? Uh, the floral color book that I showed you guys was this one right here. It's the Flower Color Theory. Um, for those who've been following me and my tutorials, um, you guys know I put out a whole bunch of tutorials from the Flower Color Guide. So you can check that out on my YouTube channel. Um, and I ended up getting this book here just to sort of help me for inspirations in terms of composition. So I'll just open a page uh, and then sit down and try and paint it. So, you know, if you guys are feeling adventurous, you want to try that, you should definitely try it. Um, Patty, even my yikes paintings, I have a lot of fun. Okay, good. I'm glad. You're welcome, Andy. You're welcome, Tanya. Should we add background? Usha, if you want to add a background, absolutely go for it. I am not going to hold you back. Uh, I think you can, you can get some really nice details in. Uh, for those who, um, those who saw my post on Instagram, which, by the way, guys, you should be following me on Instagram. My details are below. I mentioned that this was inspired by Victoria Johnson, who's another artist, floral artist, and I love her work because she's, absolutely loose and she always paints her flowers first and then she adds a background which is actually a very stunning effect so check out her work Usha if you're planning to add a background just to sort of get a little bit of inspiration and maybe a little bit of a goal before you try it um, just my two cents on that topic um, yes in your sketchbook thanks uh, Kathy thank you you're welcome Kathy you're welcome Usha okay guys that is it. Thank you for joining me. This is what we ended up with. Please make sure that you tag me or just share your work with me on Instagram or even on the Facebook group. I have a Facebook uh, community. Uh, if you guys want to join and share your work and share your journey, we are a very friendly bunch. And then on Instagram, obviously, because I post a ton of updates and a ton of inspiration if you're looking for any. Thanks guys for watching and I wish you guys again a very happy 2023. Let me know again in the comments below what your goals are, if you want to share, if you want to grow and also what was the other thing that I was thinking about? Yeah, I'll see you guys next month, second Sunday of next month for another Sunday live with me and we're going to be doing more loose florals. All right guys, have a lovely lovely Sunday. Bye.